Welcome to my analysis for Hedgehogs. Today we look into PE resources, how they are located in a PE with a power reserve, for instance, um, and how the resources, uh, the, the meter information about the resources is structured. So we start with the PE file itself. Um, if you haven't watched the previous video about the basic piece structure please watch that before this video i will put a link in the description below and um yeah check that out first because i assume you know what uh, i covered there so the actual resources are or the starting point to find them um, is the optional header and the optional header has a so-called data directory the data directory is simply a list of entries which point to certain data structures. So they have addresses, virtual addresses, and they have the sizes of these data structures in the data directory. And that's also where the resources or the resource table is um, located. So the parser will pass the data directory entry for the resource table and then it narrows where to find the resources itself. So in our example we have two sections and um, I will mark the resource green. Um, I got used to green meaning resources because that's the default color for resources in Potex analyzer visualization. So uh, that's just the way I associate it. Um, yeah, so our resource entry, in our case, it will point to um, section one, resource table entry, yeah. So we point to section one, it points to the start of the data structure and the data structure for the resource uh, information is a tree. So in our example, we will have a tree um, with two resources. Uh, every leaf of the tree is uh, one resource, basically. And the path to it contains the meta information that is uh, nice to know. So we will do a close up into the resource tree itself. Um, soon also now we know that the section one is a contains the resource tree so this section is a so-called resource section in our pe example and there's a convention for um, section names uh, if it's a resource section it's usually dot r s r c or dot r data uh, but well you can always violate conventions um, these names are for humans so Malva usually doesn't care. <laughs> okay, uh, now the close up into our resource tree. I actually tried to draw a tree. Um, as you know, trees in computer science are, uh, they grow from the top to the bottom. So the root of the tree is uh, this. <laughs> That's the root in the air. And um, and then we have our basic structure here. Um, yes. Now on Windows, there is the convention that every tree has three levels and um, there's a meaning to every level. So level one would be uh, the type of the resource so let's say that's level one the, the root level two is the name of the resource and uh, level three is the language of the resource so you might have different languages for if you have a text resource you might have different versions of that um, depending on the language and um, yeah the type says well, there, there's a fixed number of types, so, um, but it will say whether it's an icon, an image, or uh, version information or something else. So the name directory, um, 
Okay, almost done. Uh, the name directory has a name identifier or a name pointer. So in, if it's a pointer, it points to an address of a string, a Unicode string. The string can be anywhere in the file. And uh, the parser needs to know how long that string is. So it will start with the length of the string and then it will, uh, there will be the actual Unicode string, which is the name of the resource. So, uh, the language directory, it has a language identifier. Every ID stands for a certain language. Uh, there are also some tables out there where you can look them up. But usually if you have um, a parser, it will um, interpret this for you. So most of the time you don't need the tables. Um, but more importantly, the language directory has a data entry pointer and the pointer points to a small data structure, the so-called data entry, which um, determines the size and the um, location of the actual raw data for the resource. So uh, let's quickly complete this for the other resource as well. Yeah. Now, with the actual raw data, that's the green, um, green one here. And the data entry says how large it is and where it starts in the file. It can be anywhere in the file. And yeah, indicated by ones and zeros. So that's the raw data right here. It depends what it is. So if it's an image, it's an image. If it's text, it's some text there. Can be anything. Could also be another pot of executable file because you know some put another executable in there and um, well same for the other resource so we have our two uh, resources here and as I said the type directory the type directory has one entry for every type that uh, exists for the resources and um, in our case we have two entries so there are two different types for each of the two resources and um, let's fill this out by example on, on the right side. Um, we have an icon, so we say the resource type is RT icon. And again, there, there are some tables uh, with uh, the IDs and the corresponding type. And uh, let's say that's a hedgehog icon we want to, our name is hedgehog and it has eight characters. And here's the actual icon. So. That's it already. Uh, I think you, I hope you understood now how this works and uh, let's see you next time. Thanks for watching.